<clears throat> okay, I'm just going to show you a, uh, a few basic fault finding tips to diagnose um, faults on a capacitor compensated brushless alternator of the type typically fit, fitted to uh, Honda frame generators of the EC series. So I've taken the back off of this one it's just to, so we can have a look at the back of the alternator there. First thing to do is just physically have a look around all here. Uh, you'll see there's bindings in here, there's a couple showing there. Quite often the, this is done with um, tie wraps. But the thing is these bindings can give you a clue as to what's going on with the, uh, the alternator. So you have a good look because if they're broken in any way it indicates that the state has got very hot at some point, expanded and snapped the binding. So that's pulling you towards a full restator. Um, but before any of that, before even taking the back off, what you need to do first is start the machine up, check you've got the right speed. Speed should be about 3,100 RPM off load, or if you're measuring it by the output, about 52 hertz with no load. Then, if you're getting zero output from the, um, uh, from the sockets, the next thing to do is just to give it a little rev, a quick rev by just getting hold of the throttle linkage. Um, and it only needs a blip because sometimes if it's if a machine has lost residual magnetism in the rotor, that will just giving it a quick rev will be enough to restore that and get the whole generating process going again. Um, if that doesn't work, well, you, you need to measure what output you're actually getting from the uh, from the sockets. If uh, if it's showing you you're getting uh, say 110 volts out of the 220 volt socket that can be a clue, it can be telling you you've lost one, one winding on the stator as the stator usually has two 110 volt windings or it could be telling you that you've got uh, contacts burnt out in your voltage changeover switch. Um, the other thing of course that it could be telling you is that you've got uh, faulty diodes on the rotor, that's there's the diodes on the rotor, I think sometimes called revolving rectifiers. Um, if they're leaky, they'll sometimes exhibit a symptom whereby the voltage is very low off load, and when you put a load on it, the voltage will pick up. So there's a little clue there. Uh, the other clue that they sometimes give you is that they're black and blown to smithereens, so it's always worth looking for. Uh, the only real way of testing is to disconnect one end and uh, measure the resistance across them. Should be high one way, low the other way. Okay, so you've uh, you've run the machine, you've given it a rev, done all of that. Uh, we'll come to look at this part which is the capacitor. Now these capacitors are quite large, capable of uh, holding a, a fair bit of charge and uh, thus giving you a kick like a horse if you get your fingers across them. So they need to be discharged before you start playing with them, I do it with a uh, with an insulated screwdriver across the terminals, uh, and I'm sure there's much safer ways of doing it, um, proper ways of doing it that you can probably look up on um, on Google to safely handle a capacitor of this size. And then once it's discharged, you want to measure the capacitance across there with a meter that will do it. And it'll have a value written on the side, in this case, 16 microfarads. It looks like 16 followed by U and a capital F. But that U is, in fact, the Greek symbol for micro, 16 microfarads. So you measure across that and check that its value corresponds to the value written on the side. It's very common for these to fail. They don't last forever. And quite commonly, if they do fail, they'll exhibit some physical signs. Like they'll be bulging, cracked, burnt. The cats will be blown off. Um, anything like that can give you a clue as to what's going on. When you come to replace one of those, don't be tempted by a washing machine capacitor off eBay. A starting capacitor is just designed to get a motor going for a few seconds. These have to run for ages, so you need the proper capacitor to fit one of these, otherwise it won't last very long. Okay. Um, the next thing to check is the windings themselves, so we just disconnect the main plug, they usually have a plug coming off the stator, four uh, connections in it like that. Those four connections are the ends of the two 110 volt windings. 
uh, you it's it could be wide so that that's one winding diagonally the other winding or this is one winding and that's the other winding kind of there's no convention about it but if you fish about in there with a uh, a voltmeter set to resistance you're going to be expecting to find two pairs and they're both going to be the same resistance in the region of an ohm or half an ohm or something like that and once you've figured out which are the two windings there should be no connectivity between them at all okay if any of those conditions aren't met then it's pointing you towards a fault in the uh, in the state of winding quite often these uh, parts for these alternators will be so expensive that it's probably cheaper to just buy a complete second hand alternator and fit it on than it is to change a part like a stator, typically a, sp a stator on a on a four kilowatt um, alternator like this might cost you three hundred pounds. So um, you know, and you can usually pick up a complete second hand alternator for say one fifty. So um, it's worth thinking about that. The other thing that you need to consider is that they don't usually fail for nothing there's usually a root cause and the most common root cause that causes them to fail is a dirty carburetor on the engine dirty carburetor leads to lower engine power when you put a load on the alternator it ends up slowing up the engine you slow the engine you slow the fan that's dri that's driving air through the alternator and that makes it overheat so that's one thing to uh, consider. The other thing that will, uh, that will cause them to fail is if somebody's put a box over them to, to cut down on the, on the, on the noise, that will make them overheat. Maybe somebody leave a coat on it. Maybe it's got a mouse nest in there, it's, you know, um, that's uh, blocking off the airflow. All sorts of things like that. But basically, there's no point just changing a component in your alternator without checking that your engine is capable of delivering the power. To drive that alternator because low engine power kills alternators. That's about, I think, all I've got to tell you on fault finding a, a simple capacitor compensated brushless alternator.